All right, so back to the, the reference and the, the philosophy. Here, uh, on the same vein, I repeat it from uh, this another one. It's really important to visit uh, places, and not only for taking pictures, but also for your, the way you experience the city, the location you visit. You have the smells, you talk to people, and uh, you will bring back uh, notes that you, then you can share with uh, your team and with the other team. Here, it was a... Uh, a photo session in Long Beach, uh, in south uh, of Los Angeles, and it was just for the lighting and the depth, uh, the way the, the ocean uh, particles react with the smog of Los Angeles, and at some point it creates this weird, uh, desaturated uh, uh, visual, and it, it impacted a lot the, the, the lighting of Karnaka. Uh, also, here it's in different places, uh, Malibu, and uh, more importantly, uh, Barcelona. Uh, I tried to go to uh, Cuba, but uh, I was not able to do the, that trip, so I went to Barcelona, because to me, Barcelona is, um, is, um, is like La Havana, uh, Havana, but in a better state. So then the work would be to add some decay to, uh, to this layer. And uh, here it's Barcelona, and you clearly uh, feel uh, the parallel with uh, the level design approach. So maybe here you can talk about what we said. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it, it looks like Dishonored, um, <laughs> but there are too many balconies. <laughs> <laughs> and too many doors and too many windows, and you know, so... But it's exactly, yeah, you can feel Dishonored in this picture. Um, and you have flat roofs also, uh, and uh, again, it illustrates the fact that they, you know, the artists they can't do that in Dishonored. It's it's impossible. I mean, you have too many, op you know, shutters uh, that are breakable that should be breakable. You have windows that where you can enter the apartments. Uh, it feels that they're breakable as well, uh, and you feel like you could traverse the entire streets up high by you know going from a balcony to balcony without even using a power so this is representative but it's not what's in the game and uh, that's a good that's a good reference i think yeah okay <coughs> um so yeah we studied also uh, old colonies or is it uh, for i don't know british people uh, to move to a southern location and build a new city or will they adapt to the to the sun to the to the weather so that was important to study the, the colonies and here's the result of gathering uh, good references it was the first uh, kind of postcard we did of the Karnakas bay and it's not a, when you see it, it to me it's, it's a mix of Kong uh, Island and uh, a big metropole like Los Angeles. So it doesn't you know, give the, intention, the, the, the perception of people going there for vacation. So it, it, it was really hard to, to, to produce this piece because uh, if it's too sunny and, uh, and, and you want to go for holidays, it's a fail. So here you, you see the sun, but also you have some rain. Uh, you see the density of the vegetation. And um, well, I think uh, we'll see the, the city from top uh, from a top view. Yeah, that's, so a, that's a great vista. Uh, unfortunately, we, we could not put it in the game as it is. I mean, in the game, you don't see the city from, from that far. That far. Mm. And I think what's cool is that we put, we, we've put the, this as a painting in one of the levels so that you know, the player can look at it and uh, approach. And, and it's during, during a cutscene, so and where the, the guy says, this is my Karnaka. And, and uh, you know, it would, this is really cool to have this kind of artworks because we can put them, them in the game. And it's like, you know, when you go into a, a, an aristocrat uh, apartment, you see these super nice paintings, and you can just stop and look at them. I mean, I don't know, but what games can say that, mm. right? Yes. <laughs> and I, I, I also like it, and I, I just want to make a note about this. It's painted by hand. There's no Photoshop of like taking a you know, photo montage. It's, it's, it's drawn by hand. Mm. And that's what I like, and maybe that's what makes the difference with some other projects where you, you clearly see that it's not like pure art, it's like montage, and uh, I don't feel it's really good. So uh, in, 
in well every piece we reproduce it's it's done by hand it's there's no real 3d montage or photo montage it's well it's it's pure illustration like uh, back in the old days um, I will cover the team spirit so here it, it was the Movember um, uh, it, just to <laughs> It's just to illustrate that uh, at the peak of the production, this is 70 artists working on, uh, on the project. Uh, I think we were like 20 for this another one. We are 70. It's uh, inside the studio and outside the studio. We have a few uh, artists in, uh, as I said, New York or Romania. Um, so that's a bunch of moustache. It was a uh, moustache day, I think. This, uh, this is the day, yeah. Yeah, moustache day in November. All right. And to me, uh, I think this is the same uh, for Tuff. It's really essential to sit in my team. I don't, I don't uh, have a desk uh, somewhere else uh, in a closed room. Uh, I, I sit inside the team. So every time I do a feedback or a brief, the other guy of the team uh, uh, listen, and uh, we all uh, raise the bar together of, of, of uh, well. The information uh, circles, uh, circulates better. And, uh, it's like if one person has a great idea, another person can easily chip in and you can all collaborate yeah, exactly. on something. We have big open space. It's made of three uh, giant of open space. Tuff is sitting uh, next to his team too. Uh, he's more close to the campaign team, so a part of my artists are close to him and they, uh, they work together. And uh, we, we try, uh, I walk a lot and I try to to make the information uh, circulate a lot. So we, we spend a lot of time training uh, uh, two different techniques. Um, they go train their, their, themselves to clay sculpture, for example. So she, she was the, she's the lead um, uh, character modeling, and she's doing fine arts just to, you know, to train herself to, to 3D. And, uh, it's, it's a different approach than uh, some uh, other studio. And uh, one key element in the, uh, in this journey uh, of creating uh, art for games is the quality of the brief and the feedbacks. And here you, you see the brief we did for uh, the arms of Emily. So just because it's just an arm, so uh, I think this slide is cool. And, uh, but it's full of detail. You see the silhouette, you see the weight of the clothes, the, uh, how the light will react to uh, the folds. Uh, you even see the, um, uh, a cut of the, the cuff and how the buttons uh, impact the silhouettes of, uh, of the jacket. And this is what we produce uh, for each piece, each character. No, maybe not every character, but uh, a lot of characters. Because when it's done for one, then you can apply it for, for the other. And the uh, quality of the, of the feedback, the accuracy of the feedback, it's really important to, to, to sit with the guy and, good, and, and give good feedbacks. Uh, I saw some other projects where feedbacks were like, well, yeah, it's cool, it's blue, and then we we'll, maybe we change later. Now you have to be super accurate because you have a lot to, pr to produce. Doing a game during four years compared to a film, uh, a movie, which could maybe it takes one year, you have to produce everything. You don't go into a location, you record, and then it's uh, in the box. Here you have to to do every every single uh, thing, so that's why uh, feedbacks are really important, and that will drive on, uh, the to a certain quality. <clears throat> so at, at target, uh, um, a high quality for this game, uh, this one on one, but even more for this one two, um, and people of my team suffer a little bit, so that's why you see this. <laughs> uh, but well, at the end of the day, when they, they suffer, sometimes, uh, how do you say, menace them? Uh, can we say that? Yeah, I threaten them, <laughs> you know, I shake them. Uh, Hope HR's not here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't shake them. <laughs> Uh, but when they see the result at the end of the day, they, they understand that it was, you know, the only solution, and they really enjoyed the result of their work. So I mean, surely it creates a very solid foundation for the rest of the game as well. So it mm. would help you and everyone else in the team. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, I often say that I would like to have object from Dishonored at my home, and I'm not saying that just because you know it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm really think, I'm, I really, it's true. I, mm. uh, most of the objects. Are designed, and each of the each of the 
objects, uh, they, they are uh, uh, conceptualized, designed, painted I mean, in 3D. And at the end of the day, it makes a, a super original object that you really want to have at home. You know, like if you see, if you look at the typewriter, if you look at even the smallest ashtray is nice. I don't know. I mean, it's something really cool, and, and it helps the immersion. It, it helps uh, the the unity of the of the thing. Yeah, you see the the, the tap on the on the, on this table, like that's one of the thing I make him suffer with. Like each time I have a new object, uh, if there is a tap, I, I'm I'm saying, okay, is it interactive? Um, and everybody's no, no, it's not. Well, it should. And then suddenly they have to bring back the object, remove the, the attached tab, and put a, an interactive one on it. And then, then the VFX team has to create water going from the tap. And then everybody speaks the off song. because they say, what's the point to have a tap, right? <laughs> Why? Why do you do that? Why do you have toilets that nobody uses? Why do you have all this kind of stuff? And I say, because for two reasons. Because I think having a word that responds to you each time you try something is cool. It's just like, it's a world. So if I want to go and flush the toilet, it should work. Or if I had to open a window, it should work. Or if I, everything that you feel like should work, should work. So that's, that's the first thing. And the second thing, which is more, I think, more in the philosophy of Arcane, is that, you know, <laughs> when you have an interaction on the only ob object that you have to use during the, the gameplay, like you have, for example, I don't know, a typewriter that is used to progress the story, and then you go and you, you click the, the typewriter and you have a cutscene, the, but then the next typewriter is not interactive. Uh, it's kind of, you know, telling the, the player what to do. Like, is not thinking about the environment and, and planning something, is just following the, interacti the interactivity of each object. It goes, there's an, an interactive window, oh, that's probably where I have to go. Uh, and the other one on the side is not interactive, so, and you know, it gives information to the player. And this information, I think, is reducing the way you, 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 you feel about the game, which is, you feel, Handed by, you know, um, um, uh, I don't know, you know, when you draw someone. Uh, led by the hand? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you feel led by the hand. And, and we don't want that. We, don't, we want the player to have informed choices on what they do. That's why, <coughs> sorry, that's why um, I think all these things are here to remind the player that no, it's not because this is interactive that it's going to be of some any, I mean, of any use for you. Just work. <laughs> you know, just you know, go explore and find things and, and try things, but not based on the fact that it's, it's, it, it exists, on the, based on the fact that you thought about it and you do, you're going to do something about it. That's, uh, that's why uh, we have all this um, crazy interactivity <laughs> in the game. That's it, I'm finished. <laughs> Makes my, my team so far. <clears throat> uh, OK, I'm lost now. <laughs> Sorry. All right. The so I was about Clock to say orange. I'm a, it's a mashup of Kubrick's Clockwork Orange and Singing in the Rain. That's what happened in the studio where we try to, uh, to reach, uh, raise the bar and uh, also uh, uh, try to be uh, cool with the team because they suffer a lot because of this rule. And uh, this is, these are the only rule. This philosophy is what makes Arcane uh, different, I think, and these are not too different. It's because we say yes to the player. Uh, we don't set up a rule for one object and not for the other. Um, well, so we are agile perfectionists and uh, we fight together. And uh, that, that was the, the point about uh, this uh, chapter with the team. Um, all right. So here it's, the, it's a video of the development of Emily. It's too short. Uh, it's too short, man. Yeah, too short. <laughs> <laughs> so can I talk about my <laughs> philosophy? <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to see more. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. All right. So what I, uh, I, I've repeated uh, during this one, uh, a lot, is that art is not graphics. So uh, I, I said it during the introduction, where you know um, people were talking about graphic cards, technology, software, etc. And too many people uh, were judging the visual of, of a game, focusing on a polygon only or shaders or technology, and uh, I've repeated, art is not graphics. That's how I, I shake up the, uh, the habits of the industry. Um, and in general, I say, no matter how powerful uh, your engine is, just to explain, um, no matter if you develop on uh, mobile phone or console, uh, uh, all console games, if your design is weak, like this, uh, you fail. <laughs> it's a level design uh, drawing. Not at all. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, you know, I, I, to, I told you that I was going to talk about the windmills. So this thing is interesting because uh, you remember the huge ones. The, the, you know, it's like hundreds of meter high, I think. Uh, of course, I wasn't worried about these ones because you never could climb on it. You could, I mean, they are in the distance. Uh, but at some point in the production, we decided that we we wanted small smaller ones. And then my fear, you know, came true. Like, okay, now this thing, we're gonna use it to power the wall of lights. So then, uh, before you could, you know, remove the whale tank from, from the wall of light and it was, you know, shutting it down. But with this thing, now it's impossible. It always turns, there are always wind, and, and, uh, and then the player won't have any solution to do this. So, Again, I, I, I said, well, okay, so you, at least you have to be, to have breakable blades, right? And he goes, no, because, you know, these are huge things. Uh, the wood is, is massive. You cannot just fire a, a, a bolt in it and they break. And I say, can we have at least the bullets? <laughs> and he says, yeah, okay, okay. And then, you know, it was a bit... And then after that, I came with... Okay, so uh, this is the way to do it. But what if you don't have ammunition anymore? And what if you don't have ammunition? Uh, you, you, you have to find another way to bring it down, right? That's where we came with the idea of the lever for these things, which is the brake. And at the beginning, <laughs> you know, they put it at the base because that's where you should put it. Uh, and, and then we went, well, no, because if you do it, then the guards, the AI is very smart, and the guards will notice that it's not working, and they will have to go and then switch it back. And then what if the player goes back and switches back again? <laughs> and you can go on and on and on, like, and it's, it, it wasn't good, you know? It, it felt, it make, make the AI fel, felt weak or something, like, a, or it's what we call a machine state. So we decided to put it high up, and that's where we came up with the idea with the big platform. <laughs> and of course, it was ruining the design to put this huge thing, you know, like with railings and things. But we won, and now we have... <laughs> I'm sorry, we won, and now you can do it. Now you can jump on the platform or far reach or do anything, and then you can, you know... So, that's a cool story. Uh, you've broken the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, now let's try to see what we gain uh, when we work with a philosophy on top of uh, uh, the art. Uh, the benefits are of a strong visual direction uh, are multiple. All along the production, it motivates uh, my team because they have a clear uh, vision of where we are going. It motivates the other team uh, at Arkane, like uh, the, progr the rendering programmers, the level designers, the, well, they, 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 they are fed uh, with, uh, with all these uh, visuals. It keeps me uh, full of energy because when you do uh, uh, a game that is that big, you have to be like in a good state, you know, every day, and, uh, and uh, because you have to motivate your team also. And uh, it excites our publisher because they see good visuals. It's important. They, uh, they, uh, they visualize their um, maybe uh, PR campaigns uh, later, and, uh, so that's cool. They are all excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, the players uh, enjoy a great and a meaningful uh, content because well, we, we've worked uh, that way. Um, now, with Badass Graphics, 
thanks to our new engine uh, called the Void Engine. So I think I have a slide about this, or maybe not. Uh, so now you understand my willing to give a boost to the content. Okay, and from the, the, the early stage, and from a project, so this is Corwin, this is another one, to another project. And this is what I call uh, raise the bar. Uh, here you see Emily uh, from this one, and this is uh, Emily in this another two. I repeat it every single day at Arken, and it's, uh, I don't lie, I really say that, you know, uh, people are like, wow, it's hard, etc. And uh, we were targeting a real this another two, not this another 1.5. And uh, to the team, uh, uh, because when we did this on one, we were like a small outsider facing a huge uh, AAA, and uh, we were like, whoa. <coughs> so we were like speaking like this, we are, we are good, we are small, but we are good, we are smart, etc. Then it was a success. But now our time to, to face like new small IP, and we are the second opus. So I, I told the, the, the art team, uh, do you remember Terminator 1? Uh, and uh, do you remember Terminator 2? And they said, okay, uh, we see uh, your point. Terminator 2 is one of the greatest movies you know, studied in every uh, uh, schools. So it's a great second opus of something. Uh, there are a bunch of other movies uh, where the second opus is good too, but this one was a good example. So, so that's what we target, raising the, raising the bar, the quality. We never stop. We, we, know, we never say, oh, well, we're good. We have a lots of good visual. We'll see. Uh, we don't think like that. And it's Emily again. Ah. <laughs> I think we'll talk ab about Emily after that. So, okay, again, this is another one. Uh, visually, it was cool. And this is another two. Let's raise the bar. <coughs> it's cool to see the difference like this uh, before, after. Uh, people loved uh, the, the, the tall boy uh, designs, and uh, we went with the clockwork design for this or two. So you see the level of details, the, the energy we put in every uh, everything, the design, the materials, the, the anatomy of things. And uh, so this is the slide about the void engine. Thanks to the void engine, uh, it's our own uh, engine, and now the benefits uh, are really. Uh, how, how can we say that? We work closely to the rendering programmers or to the AI guys, to the tools. Uh, it's not a third party engine where, where you have to call for support. You just have to leave your desk and go to the, to the guy and say, I want this shader, I want a skin shader so that the sun is going through the thinner part. Uh, and uh, you design everything. Uh, I mean, as you want, on demand, uh, it's really nice. It's hard because you produce the engine while you do the game, so it's broken a long time. And uh, sometimes you fear that uh, you won't reach the goal, you, you, like for a milestone or for a, a deadline. But in the end, it really, really makes the difference. Yeah, we, 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 we just have to ask. And um, well, of course, they're not doing everything we want, but. Um, they understand that, you know, like for example, I, I have to really to thank the rendering team for the level um, that is called the crack in the slab. They, they, you know, it was very, very difficult to do this level because you have two, two levels in one, I mean almost three levels in one, where you can see one level through a lens and while you're in, inside another one. Um, and you have all these lighting issues, you know, uh, Skyboxes issues. Um, um, they had to solve so many problems, and uh, and at the end of the day, I think the result is great. So, and it's not only on that level, by the way. It's it's on all the maps, all the level, oh, every every single uh, every single level uh, uh, have a, a difficulty. You know, I'm I'm mm. thinking about like clockwork, which is for you know for for the lighting team, it's also a problem. Um, and when you think about that, it's like, when I think about cracking the slab, for example, it's the level where you go back in time, by the way. Um, it's only one level. Mm. Like, they had to do all this work for one level. Can you... No, you don't realize that, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely much? amazing, because in a yeah. team, we try, you know, we try to do things that are, you know, 
uh, useful for the entire game. Like, mm. we don't want to waste time and money, right? It's, uh, uh, it's logical, we, we don't want to. But here, they did a, a, a tremendous amount of work for one level only. And, and th I think this is something we have to, they have to take credit for. And we did it for every level, by the way. What? We did it for every level. Yeah, almost, yeah. It, it's, yeah, that's, uh, so having a new engine allows us to do this. You know, to really push the the, the, the tech as as far as possible. Mm. Uh, as as Seb was saying, there were days where we were like, we we will never manage to do this. And then the other day was like, I found a solution. You know, things like that. And and it's it's very difficult because you you always you you, do, you don't really know what what how it's going to end up. And maybe you we will have to cut the level because it's not possible to do it. But at the end of the day, everybody worked like their asses off, like for uh, edges, and, 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 and we managed to do something really cool, so. And uh, you have to trust each other, so if you have a good tech guy, uh, even if he says it will, uh, it will fall uh, in your build one day, you have to trust him, and it's super hard because you are stressed, your, your design or could, you know, could break or could fall, and, uh, and you'll have to find another solution. Or, and when you have the feeling of something really cool and you communicate it to uh, the other member of the team, then they realize it's important because they trust you and it's all based on, uh, uh, on this you know, uh, uh, mindset and uh, philosophy. Yeah, it's frightening, to be honest. <laughs> because you know, when you, 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 you realize that maybe the level you've been working on for years, mm. maybe it's going to be cut because it's just not possible, it's very frightening. So, mm. but it's at the same time, I, I would say that having a new engine allows us so many possibilities, as, as like, like I said before, having, uh, you know, working on one level for one tech, one tech for one level uh, is awesome. And uh, mm. I think we, we don't regret uh, any, any, anything. Yeah. I mean, I don't regret anything. Maybe the tech team is regretting something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So back to the render part of um, the game, and um, it applies. So here I will uh, show you the difference between the CG trailer we released at e the first E3 uh, two years ago and uh, what we did in game. And uh, what happened is that people are get getting confused whether they are looking at uh, the CG trailer here. So uh, you see it's a video, it's a screenshot I did uh, recently, and this is in game. And when you go uh, on forums, because we, we follow the players, what they expect, what they, they feel when they see these videos, uh, some are saying uh, it's better than the trailer uh, released uh, two years ago, and, uh, but now it's in game. So we cannot talk that much about that while we are doing the promotion of the game, but uh, we were like, wow, they, 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 they are getting confused if it's uh, live or if it's a CG trailer, and we Which were is like, a good thing. Yeah, That's a very good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, yeah. and uh, it applies not only to um, to the rendering part. I mean, uh, the the visual. It's also the AI, the animation, uh, the VFX. Uh, well, the depth, the architect work. It's it's here. It's the result of every member of uh, Arcane. Um, do you have something to say? No, no. Uh, I mean. If you take on, in the trailer, you see the clockwork mansion, which is this this crazy thing. And uh, uh, I had I had a picture in my mind of what it should be. But when I saw uh, the trailer, it was even better, and and it was scary because we we, we were like, are we are we going to be able to do this? I mean, if we're not, it's wrong. <laughs> we should be able to do this kind of transformation everywhere and. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's not exactly what it is in the trailer, but at the end of the day, you have the same feeling of an entire transformation of, of rooms. And uh, in a way, I think the trailer helped us to, uh, to build the Clockwork Mansion. I don't know for you, but for, to me, it was like, because we are both, we, we agree that it, it could be a, it should be a transformation, but, you know, Technically, it was difficult, and, and for the visual, for the, 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 the lighting and everything, it was difficult. Uh, and we kind of agree that we would do transformation, but not at the scale that we see in the, in the trailer. And then I think that seeing the trailer gave us, you know... Uh, the motivation? Yeah, the mm -hmm. motivation to go even further. 
uh, yeah, myself, I was hoping that we'll cut this level. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, no way. And I was working on the trailer, so going to LA to explain uh, what is the visually speaking uh, uh, dissonant with the blur uh, team. I was like, no way. If we do it in the trailer, that means we'll have to do it in the game, uh, I'm sure. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so that was the. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So we spent like uh, yeah, four years on this level. But the results, I, I mean, uh, well, it's hard because uh, when you do the, like when you are two years into the production, you, you see uh, an amount of stress, you know, everywhere, of labels, of ideas that maybe eventually you'll cut or not. So that's why you, you're like, mm, this one is the good candidate to be cut. It's too hard. The lighting won't work. Uh, the engine is still in production. We don't have the final engine. And uh, you're like, wow. Oh. But well, when you work hard. And, um, yeah, I, w I have to say that uh, Dan, Todd, and uh, David Giacomo did a, a, a wonderful job on the, you know, all the mechanism, uh, the mechanism and how it, how it moves. and. You know, it's not just going into the wall. You have an entire space, uh, and and if you if you look at the mechanism from behind the scene, it works. It's like a real. It could it could exist in the oh. real world. You know, the weight of the thing is not stupid. Like uh, uh, there's no. Uh, uh, it's it's coherent. You you yeah. can under you yeah. can you can look at it and say yeah yeah I I, I could build build that. You know, if I had money uh, money I, I could do a house like this. Um, and this is what I think, um, this is why at the end of the day people are accepting that this level and, and f feeling that, yeah, yeah, why not, <laughs> you know, you instead of going like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, you, don't, you know, it will never happen. <laughs> this, this feels right, you know.